Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Surfer's Journey. In today's episode, I'm going to talk about when a beginner surfer should graduate to a more advanced surfboard and what that board actually looks like. By following a checklist and having some benchmarks that you want to hit before you actually go and get that board, you'll know exactly when the right time comes to purchase your new board. And guys, if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel now so you can stay up to date with all of my latest tutorials and videos. Beginner surfboards are generally longboards or foam boards, and these boards serve their purpose perfectly. They're designed to be stable, to make paddling easy, and to make standing up as easy as possible by giving you a stable platform to stand up on. But eventually, as time goes on, your skill might start to outweigh what that board allows you to do. And that's when it might come time to say goodbye to that beginner board and look for something more advanced. Firstly, let me just say that there's no reason why you even need to change from your beginner board. If you have a long board or a foam board, well there's no reason why you can't just stay on that board forever. You'll still be able to turn, you'll still be able to catch waves, but ultimately it comes down to what you want from your surfing. And it can be easier to progress and start making your maneuvers more progressive if you have a board that's slightly more advanced. Let's have a closer look at what kind of boards you could consider progressing to. Well obviously some people stay on a longboard for their whole surfing career and people with lots of practice can rip on longboards. But for me personally, I don't. I like to surf something that's smaller and more maneuverable like this here. And this can be a great choice for someone that's wanting to progress. When you talk about advancing your board, you want to go to something that has less buoyancy. It might be shorter, it might be narrower, and it might be thinner. This will make the board more responsive, which will make it easier to generate speed, it will make it easier to turn, and it will actually allow you to perform maneuvers faster and with a tighter turning radius. In addition to that, more advanced boards allow you to get out the back easier because you're able to duck dive them. Big long boards and foam boards can be quite challenging to negotiate the surf with. Lit. The catch though, when you go to that more advanced surfboard is that they can be harder to paddle, but once you get used to it, the positives far outweigh the negatives. Now that we understand what kind of surfboard you might consider advancing to, just remember that purchasing boards secondhand is cheaper and it's a really good way to try a new board, spend three to six months, maybe even 12 months on that board, and then selling it for a similar price that you actually bought. Instead of going out and buying a $1,000 board and then finding out six months later that you want to progress again. This is what I did personally and I found it worked really well for me. I mentioned that there were some benchmarks that we want to hit as a beginner progressing to intermediate. Let's have a closer look at what these are. If you're considering upgrading your beginner board to something a little bit more advanced, then I'm gonna assume that you're far beyond this point, that waist deep water where we're catching the white water waves and going straight. You should be out here by now, out the back, which is allowing you to catch unbroken waves. And you might be getting used to sitting on your surfboard. This technique allows surfers to catch waves at short notice like this. In addition to that, you're taking off and riding along a wave. You're probably starting to perform changes of direction of various intensities. It might be something like this, or it might be something like this. Either way, you're starting to turn your surfboard and perform maneuvers.
And you may even feel that from time to time, it feels like that surfboard is holding you back. If you're feeling like this, then there's a high chance that you're ready to progress to something different. So these are the two kind of surfboard designs that you might want to consider. On my left, we have a mid-length, or what used to be called a fun board. These boards have increased in popularity recently, and they were designed for longboarders who like a longer board to go a little bit shorter and get added maneuverability. A great choice for you. On my right, we have a fish. Now I know what you'll be thinking, this board is tiny and it's way too hard to progress to something like this. But if you get a fish board in this design and you get it at a six foot version, you're gonna get 45 liters, which is the same as this board on my left. Both designs will give you added maneuverability and they'll still give you sufficient paddling power. Although it will be a little bit harder than the long board because of the reduced volume. So I know that your next question is probably gonna be, what length do I choose and what volume do I go to? Well, if you use me as a starting mark, you can change it based on your height and weight. So I'm 175 centimetres and I weigh 75 kilos. Now the long board that I was riding as my beginner board, well that's 8 foot and around 60 litres. My mid length is a 6'8 and that comes in at about 45 litres. And my fish, if I was going to get one that was appropriate for a beginner level surfer who's advancing, I would probably go a 6 foot version of this and get 45 litres. So that's still a 15 litre drop from the long board and we've gone shorter, we've gone a little bit wider. The board design has also changed and it's going to be more manoeuvrable. So ultimately you're going to be able to turn that surfboard easier and it's going to help you progress your surfing. Guys, thanks for watching the video today. Buying a surfboard is a big decision and it's quite hard to know what board you should buy. There are so many variables considering your skill level, your weight, your height, and what kind of surfing you wanna have. By following the guidelines and meeting those benchmarks that I've outlined in today's video, you're gonna know when it's time to progress. And if you choose to buy a board secondhand, you're gonna save money, which is gonna allow you to sample a greater range of surfboards, which is gonna ultimately allow you to find the best board for you. Remember to like the video and comment below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Thanks guys. Mm -hmm.